And for more on this, I am joined by Cameron Bakari. He is the director of the Center for Global Policy and a non-resident scholar at Arabia Foundation. Cameron, thanks for joining us. Well, let's talk about what has changed recently between the U.S. and Iran to be discussing this uh, 10,000 troop de possible deployment. When you have an increase in tensions and both sides are not sure of what the other side will do, they make preparations. And so there is perception, misperception. Uh, each side thinks the other side is going to strike first. And so both sides take measures to defend themselves. And I think that this call for somewhere between five to 10,000 troops by uh, CENTCOM uh, is in line uh, with that purpose of not knowing what the Iranians will do. We have intelligence that they intend to strike against American interests and American targets in the region, but it's not really clear where and when. So part of the reason is to say, okay, if you move, then we're ready for you. Uh, and on the other hand, it's also uh, not just a signal, but an actual preparedness. So who would this deployment include and where will these troops be sent? I suspect that, you know, the bulk of these troops would be deployed in Iraq uh, because that's where Iran has, uh, you know, militias at its disposal that can strike at American interests. Uh, but they could also be deployed elsewhere in the region. It's not really clear. So all we can do is analyze and speculate at this point. So how are veterans and military families responding to this news? Well, obviously, every time you have a call up for, you know, additional troops, you know, that that's uh, that's not something that families of troops and, uh, you know, whether they're in the region or at home and getting ready to go to the region uh, are, you know, they, they wouldn't like to hear that. But, you know, at the same time, well, you know, it's duty. And when duty calls, you go. And so in some sense, the families are ready. They, they all, you know, they, the families are prepared. Uh, you know, well ahead of a time, but every time there, that happens, it's a new thing. So it's, it's, a, it's a mixed sort of response. And, and yes, of course, uh, as you said, you know, it makes a lot of people very uneasy, but this is a, a lot of boots on the ground, a lot of people over there, a lot of troops over there. What are the risks associated with this uh, move? Well, I mean, this is part of the escalation that we've been seeing now for several months. And, and you know, at least in the last few weeks, it's, it's really escalated. So uh, not to say that this is going to necessarily lead to conflict, but when you have this escalation, there's always the rising risk of a miscalculation on one or both sides. And then, you know, you, you, we, we fear the outbreak of hostilities. So uh, in many ways, it's a defensive measure. Nobody's trying to seek war. I think both le leaderships have said that they don't want war. They don't think war is going to happen, but they can't be f uh, certain about that. And so they prepare for the worst case scenario. Well, uh, Cameron, n not to be beating a dead horse here, but really the Iran and U.S., they have been adversaries for decades, for such a long time. What is the main reason for these rising uh, tensions right now? Well, I mean, one of the reasons is very clear is that Iran is under pressure once again because the Trump administration nixed the nuclear deal and reimposed sanctions that are really hurting Iran. And so Iran has to respond from its point of view uh, in a way so as to try and shape American perceptions and try to get the Americans uh, to, to back off from the sanctions. Uh, from the United States point of view, not only was the nuclear deal bad, uh, at least from the perspective of the Trump administration. There's also the problem, which is much more important than the nuclear uh, uh, threat, is that Iran's regional influence has increased. Every time uh, the United States uh, deals with Sunni jihadists and, and, and weakens that, that threat, Iran gains from that. And so uh, Iran now has a disproportionate amount of influence in the region because of the weakness of the Arab states and the Arab world being in chaos. And now, you know, with, with the defeat of, or at least the territorial defeat of, of ISIS, Iran uh, has the upper hand. So immediately the United States has to swing back and say, okay, you know, we've dealt with the Sunni jihadist threat, 
but we have Iran and its Shia radicalism still as a threat and, in fact, increase. So it's, it's, it's almost as if Washington is caught in a causality loop. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Cameron Bakari, thank you so much for joining us.